Okay, so this is a review of episode 13 of season 3 of Twin Peaks. I'd like to talk about a few things, mainly the use of colour. Um, in the beginning of this episode, you had Sunny Jim, who had uh, received a new gym set, courtesy of, well, the new benefactors of his father. And essentially, what I love about this episode's use of colour is that it really doesn't form character. Sonny Jim is playing on this gym set, which is quite colourful, but behind him is complete darkness. It's pitch black like space. It could almost be um, the coding of a, a theatre background in that all you really are focused on is what the spotlight has um, sectioned out for you, which is Sonny Jim having fun, um, un unaware of the madness that's actually surrounding him and is actually obviously uh, quite interesting to us, the viewer. So I really like that. In contrast to that, when you've got Evil Cooper um, going up in the elevator uh, to meet those uh, bad guys, those stooges, the colouring is uh, quite muted. There's literally no life to, to Evil Cooper. He is essentially uh, this strange doppelganger that was quite compelling in his way of controlling the the thugs via taking down their leader. It was something that I kind of thought was going to happen in terms of him taking control, but I wasn't sure in what way. And um, him moving his arm back to the resting place and demonstrating his power was much more uh, interesting than him just taking the guy out straight away. So I really appreciated that. Um, what else do I have in my notes? Let's see. Right. Dougie and Anthony's plot is moving along. Um, sometimes it's hard to keep track of the names, but I'm sure you're aware of it. Anthony is the very uh, dodgy um, insurance guy that Dougie has actually been able to uh, foil using the, the strange intuition afforded to him by the lodge or the waiting room. Uh, we haven't really been given an official explanation, but he figured that out. And now the, uh, the, the whole horrible idea of killing Dougie has consumed Anthony in that he can't actually go ahead of it anymore. Um, there's, there's a lot of plot armor, as I like to call it, surrounding our friend uh, Dougie. Um, so I, I don't really fear for his character. I'm just allowing him to move the plot along. And at some point, hopefully, um, we might actually get a, a payoff for that in some way. Because uh, there's, there's not much fear for him as a character if I feel that at some point he's going to bump into a wall and someone's going to escort him around the wall into um, the building he's trying to access, as it were. So yeah, I, um, I, I have an issue with that, but... He's, more, he's mainly comic relief for me, um, so I'm not really uh, fretting about that as much as the other issues I have with the program, but I'm enjoying it. Um, Norma and her branding of the uh, double R is quite interesting. I mean, the cherry pie um, that people love in Twin Peaks has now become a major character in a way, um, because apparently the... Uh, other branches of her, of her new branding, have they not been using the ingredients in the way that she specified? And thus, <laughs> we have a, a situation where the integrity of what she's selling is um, not necessarily um, making a certain pro profit because, you know, they're, they're not really doing it in the same way that she's actually, um, actually wanted to do. I'm a bit distracted because I don't normally film in this way and um, I've been... Uh, afforded the space to do so and so I'm thinking about how to film it as I talk to you um, This looks like a bit like a, a strange mouth this chair in this eye But yeah, uh, before I lose complete track of what I was saying um, We have yet another couple where We have a certain disturbance or third factor Big Ed Hurley is obviously still in love with Norma and so therefore we're seeing him look morosely at her and it's quite an intriguing end of scene um trailer uh so to speak for the next episode maybe we'll see more of ed longing for her but there he is at the end of the episode alone 
while everyone else seems to be with uh, another partner who probably has another third factor on the outside longing for them. Um, Sarah Palmer's scene um, was, it was good. It was apt showing how her day is constantly, I think the metaphor of the boxing on TV was to show she's constantly reliving a really bad moment and constantly being knocked down um, and obviously trying to blot out um, her failure um, in her life as she probably sees it. She's got no father. She's got no mother from what we've ever seen. She definitely doesn't have a husband anymore and her daughter's gone. How do you get through that? How do you indeed? Uh, last but not least, what do we have? James Hurley singing the song about um, being together with someone. Obviously, that's not so cool for Ed, who's juxtaposed in the next scene. Um, I thought the use of Jacoby's um, spade coupled with Nadine's strange quirk of the opening and closing of the, of the drape runners. That was, um, that was good. I, I'm looking forward to those characters interacting even more, even if it's not really pushing the main plot along because Twin Peaks was not always about the main plot, not as far as the second season is concerned, even though some of that, a lot of that was messy. Um, I'm enjoying that familiarity that I'm getting from the show. Anyway, enough of this for now. I will be uploading another video in the future. And uh, yeah, please do stay tuned, as it were. Check out the videos on the channel. There will be uh, probably a playlist of all these videos of Twin Peaks in the near future once the season is actually over.